See, in them days, people, everybody knew everybody. And everybody got along. And the people were so, like when we went to school, if we were walking home from school, the people invited her into our houses and say, come on in, have some hot chocolate, have some cookies. And in them days, you didn't have to worry about anything. Any a kid walking up the roads or going anywhere. There's very few cars. I remember the time up to the chicken farm. It's not on the Yankee town, but it's a story. And uh, I used to work up there for a quarter of an hour up the Contessa's chicken farm. So one day I'm up there, me and my brother, we're up there and we're, um, you know, cleaning, getting eggs and cleaning the chicken stuff out and everything. So he said to my brother, I said, let's get a couple of them chickens. I said, and we'll take them home and then we'll go camping this weekend and we'll have them. So he said, all right. So we take the chickens, we put them in a bag and took them down, down the thing a little bit. We said, we'll pick them up on our way home now. But it wasn't much traffic. So we only took two chickens. He had thousands of them. So anyway, we're going down the road and we got these chickens over our shoulder in a, in a burlap bag. And this car, of all the times for a car to come along, never, nobody ever comes along much. Was the car comes along and says, you guys want to ride? Sure. So we jump in there and who is it? It's the guy's wife that owns a chicken farm in the car. And she says, what you got in the bag? We said, oh, we picked up some stuff along the road, you know. And all of a sudden, the chickens start going, buck, buck, buck. <laughs> she says, you take them chickens back right now and put on that back in the coop, or I'm going to tell your father. And in them days, you didn't want that to happen. We're back all the way back up, we walked and put them back. <laughs> we thought we were going to have something to eat while we were camping out. It didn't work out. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but there's so much, the people are so friendly. I mean, everybody knew everybody. And <clears throat> on a weekend, everybody got together. The Corrales would come, we'd have parties down by the, by the dike there, like cooking marshmallows and hot dogs and everything. And everybody would come down, even everybody around there would stop in and have something. And, do some. The club was always busy on every uh, Saturday night. They'd have square dances. All the people would come to the square dances. Everybody had a ball. I mean, it was so much different than it is today. Today, your neighbors, nobody gets together. You don't even even the neighbors here. They say hi, and that's it. And they know you know. <clears throat> it seems like nobody's got time anymore. Then, and the trouble is, they got too much time. Everybody hears it. Everybody say today I'm bored. Ain't nothing to do. Nothing to do. Well, in them days, when I got off of school, when I come home from school, I had to cut wood for a wood stove with a handsaw. Cut wood. Then after my cutting wood, I had to go run my trap line to make sure, see that not, you know what I got to trap. And I didn't get much time to get bored. And the next day back to walk to school. But we used to go sleigh riding down the hills and down onto the pond. We had things that we made to get down the hills and onto the pond and out onto the pond, tobogganing and you was never bored, and you, we, we didn't have television until later on in the 50s, then they got the black and white. And I used to sit there and listen to Sergeant Preston from the Yukon, these old, the Lone Ranger, these old things, you know, on the radio. And it was so great just to hear that on the radio. We thought it was a big thing. But today there's too much, there's too much of it. <clears throat> the world's going too fast. And it's all computerized and everything, which I realized, you know, was a, Thing, but it's the whole world has changed. Um, could you talk a little more about the school? The Wittenberg School? Yeah. Well, that was great. We had a, there was about, I'd say about 20 some of us in the school. It was a one room schoolhouse, and we used to have to walk five and a half miles to school from where I lived and five and a half miles home. And we had this teacher up there, this woman teacher. Her name was Mrs. Reed. Well, she always used to have this big ruler. If you did something wrong, she swatched you over your knuckles. So I don't know, I did something one day, and she says to me, she said, well, I, so she puts you under her desk. So she puts me under the desk, and she's sitting there, you know, at the desk. So she puts me under there, and I happen to look, and I see a lunchbox there. So I says, oh boy. So I sat under there, and I ate her lunch. <laughs> so when she went to get her lunch, she said, what you do? I said, I got hungry and ate your lunch. You put me under there. So I ate your lunch and I ate her lunch on her. <laughs> and then we used to cut these grapevines up behind the school and swing way out on them from the trees. And we swing all out from them. But uh, I'm telling you, it was great, the old school. 
and this is where you had all the ages kids from from one to eight we raised from one to eight and one teacher taught from one to eight and we learned more in them schools than you will ever learn today I mean, I, I learned my timetable like seven times seven forty nine, seven times eight fifty six, two times six, you know, and all that. I mean, I can go through the timetables like, and how many people today can do that? And because they don't computer, they use a computer, and they don't learn that. But you learn more in them days. So how did it work? Well, one teacher with all these different kids, they're <coughs> learning different things. So like. You would learn one thing. How, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, because most people today probably wouldn't be able to e even imagine. Well, the teacher how would give you a, like, say, I was in the second grade. He give me a second grade things. The people that's in the third grade, he give. But what they did it mainly is, each year, like, if you would go from one grade to the other, you'd have the same kids that would go back in that school. So they go from first grade to the second grade to the third grade. So it was like that mainly, and go on up. There wasn't a lot of new ones coming in younger. It was, you know, the ones that all lived around there. And I think I hear that, that the school was uh, functioning until the 50s, like mid 50s. Is that yeah, it was. Uh, Anior was built, I think, in the 50s, Anior. And then I went a few years to Anior, and then I went in the Air Force. But I went, I think, four years to Anior. So the Anior was built around 1950, 51. Mm -hmm. And then it changed over from there. But when we used to walk to school after, for years there, and finally my father said, well, we gotta get a school bus or something. So old Gus Shellis had this old Cadillac. So then he started picking us up and taking us to school, back and forth to school, you know, with that old Cadillac. So we wouldn't have to walk. And boy, then that was a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> but then what happened was one year we had the flood and so the bridges went out both bridges went out and so they they put these ropes to the bridges and planks on them to go from here to here and they'd bring the school bus to the other side and say alright now you walk to there and you go across then you get on the school bus and catch it to you know the taxi and catch to up to the school so we went down that night, we didn't want to go to school. We went down that night, we cut the ropes and the bitches went floating down <laughs> the stream. <laughs> we were terrible, but it was all fun stuff. I mean, but it wasn't fun. I mean, you know, they never knew what happened to them. They thought they just broke loose, but, but we cut them down. <laughs> oh, you're on camera talking about <laughs> Oh, we had, we did some things, I'll tell you. But it was all fun. I mean, it wasn't, we weren't out robbing people, stealing. You know, it was all fun stuff. The, the guy had a, a little thing on the wood street down there. He had an old outhouse by the stream. So come Halloween night, this guy comes up from the city, goes to the outhouse, and he used to be a funny type of guy, you know. But we knew him, and uh, so we went out, and he's out in the, out there, and we took him. When he got in the outhouse, we t pushed it over into the stream while well, it went floating down the thing, and I hear him saying, wait till I get you guys, wait till I get you guys. <laughs> and it went floating down the stream. <laughs> Crazy, mm. but fun. But he was all right. <laughs> then another guy by the mill, or on the Yankee Town Pond, I remember, we built this up on an island, it had an island there. It was a story, there was a, there was a grave up there, and they said the guy got hung for something up there. But I don't know if it was true or not, but there was like a little grave up in there. But we went up there on the top of that hill, and we took these two big inner tubes, because they had inner tubes in them days, a lot of inner tubes. And we built this big slingshot between two trees up there. And then we put a big tube thing in the middle of it, and you pull it back like this, and we'd shoot rocks down at the pond. You know, these rocks like this. So one day, two guys come up in a canoe, and he said, well, let's see how good we are with a slingshot. Well, the second shot, we hit a hole, knocked the hole right through the canoe. We hit it, and the, the canoe is sinking, and the guys are screaming, wait till I catch you guys, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> we took off. <laughs> well, I know, we were bad. But it was all fun stuff, it wasn't, you know. Oh, I feel like this. But they never caught us, we were good. <laughs>